Hello, friends. I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope everything is good and great and wonderful. And thank you. Thank you so much for all of the kind words this week. Uh, I really appreciate everybody chiming in on what they think about me and my channel and all that stuff. I'm not pandering. I'm not looking for, you know, affirmation or any sort of um, validation. I'm just letting you know how I feel. So I, but I really appreciate it when you let me know. But today I started to think, I was thinking about it a little bit more, so I figured we'd continue talking about it because Em and I were talking about some games that are coming out that are like, ooh, 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 you know, we saw some new stuff. So a couple of things just to give you some insight into that is uh, the new Medal of Honor game. I don't remember what it's called. It appears like it's going to be an Oculus-only game, which sucks, means I'll never play it. But it made me think about the original Medal of Honor games, and I was a huge fan of Medal of Honor. I still have them all for my GameCube, even though I don't own a GameCube or any way of playing GameCube games. I don't, have, I don't own a Wii anymore, so I have no way of playing them, but I still own the discs, because they meant that much to me. Uh, another one was, there's a new Star Wars space combat game coming out. And I started telling her, like, I got excited about it, and she was like, are you seriously excited right now? And I'm like, yeah, like, X-Wing was a huge thing for me. X-Wing and TIE Fighter both. And all the expansion passes, the Y-Wing, the B-Wing, all that stuff. Um, as well as Wing Commander. I don't know if you remember Wing Commander. You know, if you were a gamer in the 90s, there was another series of space combat games called Wing Commander. And all those space combat fly-around games, I, I was really into. And then uh, the other one was the Lego um, Star Wars Skywalker Saga. All nine games remastered into one thing. And I was really excited about that because I've been very excited about the Lego games since the original Lego Star Wars. And so I got to thinking about, you know, how gaming has evolved. And it also speaks to how I've evolved along with gaming. Gaming has been a part of my life almost my entire life. I was born in 79, so I'm older, you know, than the Super or the SNES, not the SNES. I'm older than the NES. The NES came out in like... 85, 86 or something like that. So I was like five or six years old when it came out. My friends had it. I wasn't allowed to have it. But the games that we had then were very different than the games that we have today. And and I, I don't mean that, like, you can play those games on your phone or types of games. When I look at something like Medal of Honor, the Medal of Honor series, or those Star Wars games, the thing that was fascinating to me about those games was that they had complex and difficult gameplay but they also had rich and immersive story and they had hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of different gameplay whereas the games that came out when i was a kid when i was you know less than 10 um, were very arcade style games and the hours that you spent on the game were not new story it was trying to master very difficult levels so the game might only have you know 20 minutes of content but it takes you weeks to get through that because it's so difficult and um, there's some massive flies flying around here so the Medal of Honor series I've always loved World War II stuff I've, I've always been very into that whole time and, and not necessarily just the war but that whole time in, in world history um, so anything that was World War II themed I played and I loved 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 the stories that Medal of Honor games told and the fun thing is, when I was a kid, so prior to Medal of Honor, uh, there was Wolfenstein, of course, uh, Doom, those sorts of games that had really fun level design, really fun gameplay. But the other games that I really connected with, like um, Castlevania or Zelda, that had big open worlds that you could play, not necessarily open in some of those cases, but bigger worlds where you could spend hours exploring, those were my favorites. But when I was younger, I didn't have that. I had an Atari. I, I wasn't. I didn't have an, an NES. I had an Atari that uh, my cousin gave to me, and I'd play things like River Raid or Pole Position or Frogger. Very linear. Just you know. Again, the 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 time spent playing that game is not exploring a story or exploring an area. It's a, a, just trying to figure out how to play the damn game. And I enjoyed that when I was younger. Now I have. I get no enjoyment out of that. If the game is difficult and repetitive, 
I just shut it off. Like, I'm just not interested. Um, if it's difficult and repetitive, but there's progression, then I'm into it. And those are roguelike games. Right now I'm playing one on my phone called Void Tyrant, and I can totally recommend it. It's a very bizarre game that does not tell you at all how to play the game. You just have to figure it out. Um, and it took me a lot of hours to even care about it. But after I started caring about it, I found myself really involved in it. And it is a repetitive, just go through the motions, try to get to the end and beat the big bad. And then you can kind of do an endless run type scenario until you die and then you start over. But there's progression. As you do that, you get unlocks, which helps your characters be stronger at the start of the game. And you can skip levels and stuff like that. That I enjoy. But that old style, play it till you die keep trying, you know, throw another quarter in, hit continue. I don't enjoy that at all anymore. And I think that part of that is my, the attention span, like we talked about yesterday. I don't have one anymore. I, I If something is going to grab my attention, it needs to draw me in. And I'm no longer drawn in by repetitive, cyclic, arcade-style gameplay. I'm drawn in by story. I'm drawn in by depth and breadth uh you know the witcher 3 going out and just exploring sometimes i would just go walk through the woods in that game because it was enjoyable to walk through the woods you know red dead 2 sometimes i would just ride my horse clear across the map because i really enjoyed exploring on my horse um right now i'm playing Baldur's gate and i will explore every nook and cranny of that game and i find uh, i found little trees that have you know a ring in them or something just because i enjoy wandering around the maps um, so I, I guess the point is I don't know why the story or the openness of a game holds my attention more than the repetitiveness but uh, it does and maybe that says something about me I don't know what it is I'm going to keep thinking on it and maybe we'll talk about it again tomorrow but I'm very excited that I get to kind of revisit some of my favorite games of the past like Star Wars, you know, Spaceship Battles, or Medal of Honor, or the Lego games. I've enjoyed all of those. Um, I'm kind of over the whole, you know, Definitive Edition. Like, how many games are we going to remake and just call them the Definitive Edition and, and just do minor graphic upgrades? I, I joked that we need a Minesweeper Definitive Edition. We'll see what happens. Thank you for being here, as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Being amazing friends and wonderful people, I really appreciate you, and I will see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is catharsis. It's a noun meaning the purging of the senses through tragic drama or through music, or in general, a discharge of negative emotions. After losing matches at the club's court, Puccini's M Madame Butterfly always leads Celeste to the catharsis. Catharsis. C-A-T-H-A-R-S-I-S.